The Cloudcast is sponsored by Intel Cloud for All, driving the creation of tens of thousands of clouds. Cloudcast Media presents, from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is The Cloudcast with Aaron Delp and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to another episode of the Cloudcast. We're coming to you live from DockerCon here in Barcelona. Huge thank you to the Docker folks for having us as a media sponsor. Today, we actually have Darren Shepard, co-founder and chief architect at Rancher Labs. How are you doing, Darren? Doing good. Excited to be here. Um, we'll do a quick... So we actually just had the Rancher folks on, Sh- Shannon and Chang specifically, um, in Vancouver at OpenStack Summit, so Cloudcast number 195, and I'll put a link to the show notes in for the audience. Um, but but there may be some folks that are either new listeners or didn't necessarily catch that episode. So tell us you know, briefly your background and then a brief intro to Rancher. Yeah, so I mean, so my background is really, um, we kind of come from the IaaS space running um, clouds, OpenStack, CloudStack. That was kind of what we were doing before we started Rancher. And now the obvious transition is to go into containers because this is kind of where the workload is is moving towards. Um, so what, what we do at Rancher is is basically we provide like a full solution on deploying a private container service. So we focus on really heavily focus on the infrastructure aspect of bringing in like compute storage, networking, um, and uh, you know managing those layers, and then additionally, like the resource um, allocating them to users, uh, access you know who can access what, um, separating things into different environments and zones and, and things like that. Um, and then a lot of the um, additional things you'll need for applications like load balancing and service discovery, um, you know a lot of those things. And so we just kind of provide the end-to-end solution there. Um, one of the things that's kind of different about Rangers, we're very Docker native. We very very much embrace the Docker solution as much as possible. Yep, makes sense. Makes sense. And, and so. One thing I've noticed a trend in the container ecosystem here, and it almost mirrors in some way the early days of infrastructure as a service, um, the workloads seem to start out as as ephemeral and then move to persistence over time. Um, and that certainly seems to be the fact with containers as well. Mm-hmm. You know, data data persistence and, and plug-in architectures and trying to get every, every, everything to work with everyone it certainly seems to be the next trend. And, and first of all, are you seeing that? And, yeah. and what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, initially, I mean, because this is a new technology and people are trying it out, trying it out like the, um, you know, they're not going to trust the persistent workloads on any new technologies. So the first thing people always try is the, you know, the simple ephemeral applications because it doesn't really matter if it dies. Um, so people, you know, they've been running those people putting in production. We're seeing more and more production works workloads on Docker, and so now. They're gaining trust of the technology itself, and so now it's like, okay, now I want to start putting more applications that require persistence. And so we're, we're starting to see people, you know, they're going towards that trend. You're not necessarily quite seeing yet, like, databases, but things, you know, like not your traditional databases, but maybe Redis people are, are putting that are, that are more persistent. But there's this class of applications where um, people want persistent storage. It's not necessarily completely required. Like, it's not, if, if you lose the data, it wasn't that... It's like it's a nice to have. Like if you lose sure. the data, then it's going to take a long time to rebuild it. You know, maybe it's like cache data. So the persistence is is um, that's kind of what we're seeing right now. Is like a, a lot of the applications. It's like they're still not completely trusting. Uh, you know, full scale database, but we're probably putting putting things that have a you know nice to. You know, it's like a different kind of SLA around yeah. like if the data is lost and how long it takes. Yeah. So baby steps into data yeah, yeah. So that, that's really it's, you know, trusting a little more, trusting a little more, and and so you know, there's just a big question right now. Um, and these are the things that we're trying to address: is is you know, how do you manage, you know, the storage systems themselves? How do you plug those into Docker? And then how do you do the orchestration around the containers and things? Because a lot of when we started out, a lot of the orchestration. Um, kind of had this uh, assumption that applications were ephemeral. Sure. And now once you say, no, we'll actually care about these volumes, these volumes might exist in certain storage zones and things like that, the orchestration and, and, and management of the containers completely changes. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and so they kind of lead you straight into um, Rancher introduced the, the uh, persistent data services mm-hmm. in Rancher. Um, and, and so... Tell us a little bit about that and, and, and why it came about. Yeah, and, and so this is really because, um, you know, when you look at storage, 
you know, largely the, the storage solutions are, they're all, they're software based and they're using kind of the same hardware, you know, so um, we're looking at how can we actually manage the storage systems themselves. Um, the interaction between the storage system and the container is still based off of Docker plugins. They're still regular Docker volume plugins. But let's say if I wanted to use Gluster or SAV or, or Nixenta or, you know, some of these, others, these uh, other storage solutions, you know, how do I actually get those in place and, and deploy them? Um, and so traditionally that's been, you know, kind of you have like your storage team, they, they deploy that, manage it. You know, we're looking at this and saying, you know, we can manage the software, this software the same as we're doing other containers. Um, so we can bring this much closer to the application teams, to the DevOps teams, you know, kind of break that down that silo between, you know, like the storage team that would exist over here. And so we're making it so much easier to bring in various different types of storage, deploying more specific to your application. You don't have to create these like gigantic monolithic storage systems, which are typically very hard to scale. But if, you know, if I'm deploying, you know, let's say Gluster at a little little smaller of a scale, um, you know, I don't have to do it completely custom, you know, like company-wide. I can mm-hmm. just do it, like, for, you know, certain teams or whatever. It becomes significantly easier to manage and more reliable, better failure boundaries and things like that. And so we're really, what we're trying to do with our storage services is really managing these storage systems. Um, and then, then the, as I mentioned before, they plug in through, like, the Docker volume plugins. Yeah, yeah and actually that was going to be my next question is, so if I'm a, if I'm a customer... Why Rancher um, services over a Docker plugin? Are are they complementary? Yeah, it's, are very, they? it's very complementary. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. Like as as a company, we just we fully embrace everything that's Docker. Um, we very very much like the architecture, the design, everything that they've been putting out there. And so the volume plugins is is something like we've worked with Docker on on doing. And um, so it's it, it provides. The volume plugins provides a nice interface of, of what's kind of needed from the application level of, like, I need, a, I need a volume, I need to associate the volume to the application. And so that part, um, we will use any Docker volume plugin that's out there. But if that's plugging into the storage system, how do I actually get that storage system? And that, that's really what we're focusing on is, is how do I actually deploy the, you know, that, that, that right. system. Because most of these are clustered systems. They're, they're much more difficult to kind of deploy than a lot of the applications you're seeing in Docker. Yeah, so, so it's really more around the deployment and provisioning aspects of everything. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, we really want to, you know, it's like get it to the point where, where um, you know, you just choose whatever infrastructure you want because, I mean, cloud providers now are providing really fast disk. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can go to, you know, bare metal, which has even faster disk like NVMe. Um, so I can go to any provider to get the, infa- you know, to, to get the hardware. Um, now I just need to deploy the software. So I'm just picking who's the fastest, cheapest, or, or yeah. whatever the criteria is. No, oh, that makes sense. Absolutely. And, and another thing you all did recently that I, f- I found super interesting is um, this concept of, of hyper-converged infrastructure, in which, you know, that's nothing new. But the idea of hyper-converged infrastructure around containers. Um, and there is um, a reseller out there, um, um, Redapt, who Jeff Dickey has been on the show uh, quite a few times. Um, but But... This idea of uh, Rancher working with Redapt to come out with a, basically a hyper-converged product um, or specifically around containers. And, and they've offered some other things as well. But, but basically what I was wondering is your thoughts on hyper-converged as a trend, especially around containers. Um, because a lot of people, when they think hyper-converged, they think of hyper-converged infrastructure, like compute, networking, disk, mm-hmm. all in one little package. But... But this is actually kind of hyper-converged at a higher level, correct? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, th- I mean, one of the things is we're, we're bringing in – I mean, one of the things is kind of different. We're bringing in containers too. We're also doing virtual machines. So it's, it's, a lot of people, when they think of hyper-converged ah, infrastructure – so it's containers and VMs yeah, all in Yeah, so we're, we're okay. doing both. Okay. And that's something we actually – we launched a little project uh, a while back um, called Rancher VM where we're actually – we can – because we're orchestrating containers, but the reality is you can run virtual machines in containers. Like this is how Google runs virtual machines, um, so it's it's actually a great fit. So we can we can manage virtual machines in a very similar fa- fashion as how we do containers. So we're bringing in so with this hyperconverged solution, we're doing both, mm-hmm. um, which gives you a lot of flexibility because you know you might want to put uh, containers on bare metal. Um, super fast, efficient, but there are still concerns about security, multi-tenancy, things like that. And you still do get better security by putting it into a virtual machine. And so 
with Rancho OS, like the you know lightweight small operating system we have, we we have the ability to launch these really lightweight you know virtual machines. We can put containers in there, um, but then additionally, you can you know launch if they're VMs, we can launch whatever we want, you know Red Hat or, or Windows or, mm-hmm. or or whatever. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah. yeah. So at the end of the day, it's really about combining all of the different products that y'all offer into this this fully bundled converged solution, and even the VMs become containers. Yeah, yeah, and, and so this is I mean this is a really exciting. For, um, uh, you know, opportunity for us because we, we can basically pull together the full stack of what we do. Like we, we um, our two main products are Rancher OS and Rancher, um, but those products are actually they're they're very loosely coupled. Mm-hmm. They actually you, one does not require the other. But the fact that we do have those products, we basically have the full stack of, of software that's available. And so, kind of the next logical step was you know partner with someone like Redap to you know bring in the hardware aspect and just build the full solution. That makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. So so real quick too because I, I don't remember off the top of my head. So between Rancher and Rancher OS, GA beta, like what's the status of? Everything? Right. So like so so Rancher is in is in beta. We've been um, running the beta program for the last uh, couple months. It's been going great. So we're wrapping up the beta towards the end of the year, and we're really looking at a GA at um, the beginning of next year, January February time frame. Okay. Um, yeah. So the and Rancher OS is a little. Uh, we haven't declared like a GA. Um, we're I think we're ready to go into kind of the beta on Rancher OS, uh, and then we'll be looking at GA sometime next year. Fantastic. All right. All right. So we're out of time uh, for today. Um, Darren, where can everyone find out more about you and Rancher and everything you all have going on? Yeah, so, I mean, you can go to Rancher.com. So that's our main website. Um, everything we do right now is open source. So we have a GitHub. If you just go to GitHub.com forward slash Rancher, all of our project projects are there. Um, yeah, and that's... Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you, Darren. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for listening to The Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more shows, show notes, videos, and everything social media.